this guy's uh hope everyone is good how you all doing how you all doing please let me know it feels like it's been a while since i've done one but it, it hasn't it's just a quick video right yeah i don't know it feels like it's been a while but anyway the efl finally i've not done much on the efl but i think now it's time now we're close to the season to talk about the efl and players in the efl some hidden gems and some not so hidden gems that i think it could be massively beneficial to Leeds united clearly going by the transfer strategy so far we are looking at the EFL. We are looking at some of the gems in the EFL to bring in who can help us get promoted to the Premier League. I think it's a good strategy if the price is right. And here's some more players in the EFL I think Leeds could target. With some in there that are hidden gems. Let's get into it. A quick start off. Here's the, the kind of long list that I made up of players that I like. Uh, the red, obviously, unrealistic. Orange, still unrealistic. Yellow, very difficult. Green. Probably doable, but that it is. Feel free to pause and look through the players. Now, the first part is about these guys here. Now, there's a lot of talk about players like Johnny Rowe, Morgan Whitaker, players like that who came through kind of playing playing um, in a low leagues, in Whitaker's example, and Johnny Rowe, who kind of wasn't really rated before last season. He wasn't. Um, he's had an excellent season. And it's about getting players at the right time and having players in your squad who, who can have that breakthrough. We don't really have that. We have a lot of established players, I think, right now. But do we really have those gems that you can pick up that can just flourish, like Whitaker did, for example? Like, you know, even Sammy Schmodick's an older example, but still the same example. And in League One right now, there's these three guys right here that have really impressed me. Um, Tyrese Campbell for Charlton. Uh, Femi Aziz for Reading. And Martial Gobo um, for Wigan, and who was on loan at Wigan from Fulham and they all had interesting seasons in League One and just watching them there's a lot of good young players in League One obviously but these three stood out as profiles in a team that can have that surprise season like Johnny Rowe did last year at Norwich having not been really that rated for the most part before last season and Morgan Whitaker who was all right in his previous role but then went to Plymouth and last year was excellent Okay, even Jaden Philogene is a player you can add into that. Players who were okay, but really exploded. And I don't think we really have those. We have established players. We don't have players that could break through and be crazy in terms of front farming. Mean, obviously, we've got Charlie Crew, an example, but these are ones I think, and I'll get into them right now. I'll say as well 20 years old, 23, Femi Aziz, and Marshall Gobo, 21 years old. I've gone through the usual realism, and, and as you'll see, there's a fourth guy there under my head. That is, that is Kamara, who who plays for Norwich. The reason I didn't put him in the first slide is because I, I think it would be a little difficult. And I think he kind of had that breakthrough already last year. I thought he was excellent last year. And he's now in the championship with Norwich. So but he's still part of this, but he wasn't one of the main three for that reason. But anyway, so we'll look, at, we'll look at them and start on the far left. 23 appearances. Campbell had last season with two goals and five assists. But what, what I like about these players is I love the way they move, the way they dribble, their kind of power and, and ball control. And that is something looking for a winger who Johnny Rowe, Philogene, for example, Whitaker, who can develop into a top player. You're kind of looking for the core principles of a winger and that is that ball control, that power, that aggression going forward, that 1v1 dribbling. And these guys all excelled in that. And that's why I really think they could be hidden gems that Leeds United could get for a fairly reasonable fee. Players who could surprise you next year. These won't be guaranteed starters, but they're players that by the end of the season could be miles ahead. Do you know what I mean? Like Philogene, for example. And that's the kind of model I'm looking for with these three guys. Uh, yeah, Aziz, again, 46 appearances last season for Reading, eight goals and, and nine assists. What I really like about Aziz is, was his, his power. He's a real power runner, um, a real big, strong, physical winger who who has had a slower development to get to where he is, but one who I think is ready to be part of a squad as a player who could have that massive breakthrough that he's got the physical attributes. For me, he's got the dribbling, the technical attributes. He's got a really good strike on him and a really hard low cross. And these are all things that you can develop. Um, same for Campbell as well. Like, is is he more a, a smaller kind of 
ball control orientated winger, you know, a bit like the ones we know in, in Nanto and Somerville. But one who is really nippy and loves a finesse shot. Good passer in the box as well. An excellent dribber, very quick. Um, that's the kind of model that I'm looking for in these players. And same for Godo. Now, Godo's different because he's obviously at Fulham. But I'm assuming he wouldn't get a chance at Fulham. Um, but in League One yesterday, he was on loan at Wigan and he made 34 appearances with four goals and four assists. 7.5 dribbles per game at 59% success rate, which is very high, let me tell you that. For someone over about three dribbles per game, that is very impressive. And again, similar profile to these two guys, quick, diminutive, aggressive wingers who, who for me, can impact any side they're in, can develop to have that breakout season, and if anything, be brought in for a fairly reasonable fee and be sold like the Whitakers, Phila Jeans, Rose, that's the profile I'm looking at. And these guys, all these four guys, apart from below me, who I think already reached, already had that last year, and Norwich have that one on their hands already. But these three guys, for me, can be part of a squad, who, as well as being that player, that are different to what we've got or what we will lose in Somerville and Nonto and can be part of that team. I think we need more players like this, I do. I don't think we have enough. Um, all really top players that I really like. And there's the heat maps and all that stuff. And see where they got the goals from. See where they got the shots on target. All that stuff, yeah. All right wingers, apart from Godo, who can play either side. All good players, I think, are hidden in League One. And can be the next kind of, not big thing, but the next project from League One that develops in the championship and does really well for me. All of them. All four of them. And the first one. This is where we don't really get into the hidden gems now. This is the, the actual players you've probably heard of and players we need in potential positions we need as well in League One. There is a championship player coming up as well, but right now we're still in League One with Harrison Burrows. I'm assuming a lot of you guys from watching other streams and well, me talking about it about eight times. Um, no Harrison Burrows. Harrison Burrows is a left-back player for Peterborough currently. Has came through their youth ranks as well. 22 years old, five foot six, left back can play attacking midfield and midfield, but he's predominantly a left back. He inverts a lot, so that kind of works from there. Look at his stats from last season in League One. He had 45 appearances from left back, by the way, for the most part, with six goals and 15 assists. A real, real aggressive player at left back. We do lose Junior Furpo, who is linked away. I don't think there's a more obvious replacement. I think it's almost like for like in the attacking output um, as well. I think it'd be a cheap deal. Peterborough are usually known for being fairly reasonable. You know, they bring these players in or they develop these players for nothing. They're happy to sell them for kind of four or five million because then that's ultra profits for them and then they can continue to regurgitate and do the same thing. As you can see, he's playing a lot of positions. Harrison Burrows is a top player. I, I'm convinced he will come to one of the top four or five championship sides, if not lower Premier League. If we lose Junior Firpo, I think it's the perfect light-for-light -light replacement. Plays in a possession-based system. Watch a lot of Peterborough. They play similar to how we do in certain times. Slow build-up. The full-backs are important in that build-up. And Harrison Burrows, for me, is kind of that all-around left-back backing player that we need. I really do think that. I think it's perfect for us. There's some key statistics here. Some key strengths and concerns. The key strengths is goal output, obviously. So that, I should talk about that. Is you know, 21, 22 goal involvements from left back last season is a joke. Consistent performer as well. Game IQ is a smart player. You know, I like smart players who understand kind of the, the areas they need to be in in the build ups to be effective for the team, stuff like that. The, the pockets they pick up, the spaces they run into, the timing of the runs, the passes they choose. All important for me, all that stuff, that decision making and game IQ is key. Positional awareness, especially in a forward sense with Harrison Burrows. Talk about defensively in a minute. But very good going forward, hence the numbers, hence the you know, the interest in him. Um and leadership, he was for a, I think it, I don't know if it was all season or part of the season, but he definitely captained Peterborough for a little while. Um so he has that leadership side to him. He's on a trajectory, this guy is twenty two years old. I honestly think in the next two or three years, he'll be in the Premier League. Um is good enough for me. 
think he needs the right time, the right the right team to be part of that project to get to the Premier League with development as well. Still so young. But yeah, concerns, one you on defending, like I said, like for like for Firpo. He's not positionally as inconsistent as Firpo, who who does like to switch off almost once every game. Uh, it's more just that that love for defending that I talked about before. That love for wanting to defend, you know, he's not He's not one of them type of players. He's a decent tussler. He'll get in battles. He can read the game quite well. But sometimes it's just that awareness defensively that he does get beat a little bit. But again, if you want in the perfect fullback with the attacking output and the solid defensive, guys, he's going to the Premier League. So, yeah. Realistic, A, I think it is. I think it's massively realistic. Of course, assuming we sell Firpo, if we don't, he's not going to come. He wants to start and he deserves that. Ceiling, A, I think his ceiling is high. And fit, A, he fits. I think he'd fit perfect. The next one, Kai Jana Hoover, or Hoover. You guys watched your stream yesterday. We talked about this guy. For me, barring maybe Jaden Bogle, who we are heavily linked with as time recording, this would be my number one at right back for many reasons, um, which I'll talk about. Again, you look at the teams he's been at in his career. He is currently at Wolves. He was on loan at Stoke for the last 18 months, um, and he's done very well there. I think it's time for him to step up to that kind of top championship loan. I don't think he'll get through at Wolves just this season. They've just signed a young fullback. So I think it's time for him to go on loan. Maybe even a buy. I'm not sure. That might cost a little, to be honest. He's, he's still 22 years old. Very highly thought of still. Be interesting to see what happens with him, but a player I really like. He's played in the championship the last 18 months. You know, what else do you want? Again, just looking at looking at his numbers in the championship as well. Last season, Four goals and five assists for Stoke City is not a bad, it's not a bad result, is it? Let's be honest, and that's what I like about him. It's that balance he brings to a side, that consistency he brings to a side, and that reliability he brings to a side. You can see from seat map there, up and down, of course, very balanced in the way he plays. Very balanced. MFB ref stats. We didn't have them on Burrows because he's in League One. They don't do those in League One. But here's some. Here's the FB ref statistics or the diagrams to show. And as you can see, the full backs who played, similar amount of minutes to him. Very good numbers, generally speaking. Shots, assists, expected assists, shot creating actions is all right as well. Passes attempted. Now, pass completion 68%. There is context to that. A lot of kind of Stokes play when you watch it was, was kind of wide, high balls to the either the central areas, the front three, or the wingers. Um, also, there was there's a little air of rushing about the way he passes. He likes to get it forward a lot. Now, whether that's systematic, because you know, they weren't a huge possession side, for the most part, anyway, were at Stoke. A lot of they relied on possession, is what I'm trying to say. There was a lot of rushing in the passes, trying to get it forward quickly to be progressive and catch teams out. So that is that is that has to be contextualised. But as you can see, just below that, the progressive passes are ridiculous, 89 percentile. So, yeah, that's the context to that. Defensively as well, decent. Very, very decent. Nothing exceptional, but nothing bad. Very decent. Defensive, very solid. Like I said, about balance. And aerial jewels is our right air, air, really, as well. But a very all-round fullback who's played in this league. It's probably one of the best fullbacks in the last 18 months in this league. You know, I think it'd be a top addition. It really would. You look at you look at a defence of Pascal Strout, Joe Rodon, Junior Firpo, and this guy. Come on. It's the best in the league. It's not even close for me. Apart from maybe Burnley, obviously. Yeah. The overall things here, and again, key straps, I've already spoke about him. Consistency, game IQ, just like Harrison Burroughs. A lot of similarities in that sense. He's probably not as aggressive going forward as Burroughs. He's a bit more balanced. But progressive movement is excellent. Likes to run into the spaces and stuff like that. Experience as well. Pace and power. Very quick and powerful player, which I like. Does like to arrive late to the edge of the box, you know, so you can either cross it or get that shot in. Um, concerns just basic passing. I spelled basic wrong. Ignore me. Basic. But yeah. Realistic. B. I just, I'm not sure whether we'll get in at Hull. I don't know if they'll give him a chance, but we'll see. Ceiling. B+. plus. He's not reached it yet. For sure, he's still 22 years old. And fit. A. And the final one out of these before I get into some honorable mentions. Tyler Morton. We have lost an eight in Glen Kamara. I've done a video on eights, but now we're looking at championship eights. And for me, the one that stood out last season, who I thought was excellent, who 
who who would for me would is Lords here, but the one that would fit us the best is Tyler Morton. Really impressive him every time he played. Every time I saw him play. Obviously, he's, he's a Liverpool player. He was on loan at Hull last year, which kind of helps us, I guess, because you know if he was if he was a Hull player, if he, they'd be asking a lot of money for him and they probably wouldn't sell. But valued around eight million, assuming it would be a loan, maybe with the view to buy if we go up, or maybe just a straight loan. Regardless, yeah, you take him. He's an excellent player, twenty one years old still. He bossed the championship last season at Hull City. Um, six foot one. Play centre mid or CDM, can play the eight at six role, like Kamara can. But you look at his goal output, something we need from that position for me. Here it is. Again, look at the look at the heat map there. Very central, but very good in the progressive side of it as well. A lot of deep lane build up, but can break forward, which is key. You know, we have a lot of elite, deep elite deep lane build up anyway with Kamara and Gruev and Ampadu. But we didn't really have that progressive side of it. He's not necessarily an out and out eight. He is probably an eight slash six, if that makes sense. He's defensive eight, but he's key in the final third. Look at his numbers: thirty nine games, three goals, and five assists. They're the type of numbers you want your midfielders to have in this league. Okay, that makes you less predictable in build up, and that's it. That's all you need. You need to be less predictable. You need to have different scoring options and. He's right here. He's on loan. Can you get him again? I think you could. It will. Be. It's like like that Tommy Doyle trajectory, I guess, where he kind of made that Premier League loan move. He's at Wolves, I think, right now. This is similar to me, but I think there is maybe one more loan, one real top loan for him. We'll see. Will he get in at Liverpool? New manager. I'm not sure. There's a lot of other players there, but let's see. But one, I, I it's obvious top signing it would be whether that's a loan or not get him in the side and then I talk about the, the player I mentioned earlier the, that back four with a midfield of Ampadu with Martin in there it looks it's excellent it really is again just quickly as FB ref stats as you can see very well out all round balanced player what do you want me to say I've explained a lot of it excellent passer which is great. A real progressive player in the sense that, I know that word progressive gets says a lot, and it can be a bit jarring, but get the ball deep, give it forward, find a space higher up, get the ball, give it higher, find a space higher up, can he break the lines? Type player is, loses the ball, energy. A lot of energy. He moves and dictates the game, and that's what we need. That is exactly what we need. Like I said here, in my strengths for him, positional balance, Understanding when to attack, when to defend. Resistancy, again, game IQ, things I love. Progressive movements, which I've just explained. Energy. Proper, full-on energy. Who else would have loved this guy? Provides so much energy. There probably is an air of click about him in that sense. Click was always kind of a, an 8 or a 10. But a lot of the time, he'd pick the ball up deeper and just loved to progress it. It's probably an error of click in Morton's play, to be honest with you. He also has a strike on him. He, he can shoot with either side of his foot. So either side of his foot, either foot. Combination play. You know, I've done a lot of videos on eights. I've done a video on eights. You should go watch, by the way. But Tyler Morton is as good as any of them, if not better for me. Finding scoring positions. And ignore the concerns. I didn't delete it from the previous one. That is not a concern. I couldn't find any overriding concern. I honestly couldn't. Um, I have to watch more. I just couldn't. Realistic B, I think it'd be tough, but I think it's doable. Ceiling A, he's got this. He's got a massive ceiling as Tyler Morton and fit A. And before I end, here's some humble mentions. I know what you guys are screaming. I apologize. Too expensive or will play higher for me. If I'm being realistic, Gabriel Sarah, Gustavo Hamer, Jack Clark, Josh Sargent, Whit Whitaker, Patterson, Rowe, Schmodix, Vanuwick, and Trihume will all for me. Costs more than ten million. I don't think we're going to pay that for an individual. We might. I might be wrong, and we might do for one of these, maybe a, a sergeant or a Whitaker. I think players like Gabriel Sara, Jack Clark are going for fifteen million plus. Whitaker as well. So I'm not going to. I think. I think it's unrealistic. Honorable mentions: players I did like who, who if we had, if we needed a player in that position, I think it'd be key. Ben Sheaves a really good championship player. Yeah, I honestly think he can throw to the Premier League as well. 
really like Ben Chief. Would be a top addition. Uh, Umar, uh, Umar, um, Omir, sorry, from Hull, uh, number 10, came in last season and I just loved when he played. So quick and diminutive in that 10 role. Real creative. Walter Berger, an 8. Again, box to box 8. Karimo Kod Dembele at Blackpool. There's a lot of talk about him. He'd be a good addition for me. Emmanuel Latte Lath from Middlesbrough. Scored a lot of goals last season. Be great under Daniel Farker. And Michael Cooper, the goalkeeper at Plymouth. I think he's a good goalkeeper if we need one. But yeah, that's it, people. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sorry if this is a quick, fast... I just I don't want to leave the videos for more than 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, a lot of good options in the EFL. And remember, this is about having a squad. It's not about necessarily getting the key components, first-team players. We have a lot of them. Um, it's about getting squad players who can have a surprise and be ridiculous, unexpected, and I like that. And then some obvious ones that you can bring in. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I appreciate the support. Um, I'll see you guys soon.